In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Welcome to Louisa and Illuminate in the Divine Will, Part 1, with Father Thomas Salso, February of 2020. The beginning of Father's uh, talk was cut off, so I'm going to read the beginning and then we'll bring Father in at the point where he begins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. By Pope John Paul II, who is a saint now from the New Evangelization. Christian hope sustains us in committing ourselves fully to the New Evangelization and to the worldwide mission and leads us to pray as Jesus taught us, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Today as in the past, that mission is difficult and complex and demands the courage and light of the Spirit. I see the dawning of a new missionary age that shall become a radiant day bearing an abundant harvest. Fiat. We now join Father in the midst of talk one. Divine will, how Jesus is, uh, is telling her how to begin to live this abundant life. Okay, so. All right. So from volume one, uh, the Lord Jesus told me, your trust must be only in me. So here, this uh, Jesus, I trust in you. The, the image up here is so essential uh, to live in the divine will. Your trust must be only in me. Be resigned because resignation renders the soul luminous and keeps all other passions in their place in such a way that attracted by those rays of light, I, Jesus, go into that soul and I, Jesus, transform that soul completely into myself and I, Jesus, make her live of my own life. So here, we, we've got to, you know, when we hear illumination, we have understandings of the illumination that's coming. And uh, Jesus is going to teach us what the illumination is through the Lisa. And uh, as you read, as you study, uh, Jesus is going to uh, illuminate us to be ready for this great uh, blessing that's coming to all the world. So he says, your trust must be only in me. Jesus, I trust in you. Be resigned. Okay, that means... I, you know, there's, you are the one, you are the only one that I can go to. Uh, because resignation renders the soul luminous. So 
as you surrender to God, uh, you, you, as Jesus says, you are the light of the world. You, you enter into this rays of light, as he says. And then all of the other passions, your worry, your fear, your anxiety, your complaints, your negativity, your sin disappear in such a way that attracted by those light, that, those rays of light, that, that, that when you say, Jesus, I trust you, it's, it's, you have to get to the point where nothing else is as important as turning your whole life over to Jesus. Nothing is more important than him running your life. So what, what happens at that point is it's a total surrender, total desolate, total submission. That's how our lady lived. She, she was completely surrendered to God. And that light that came from the Blessed Mother is due to her, as Jesus says, being resigned uh, to allow him to be our Lord, our God, our Master, our Savior, our King. And those rays of light, Jesus says, I then can go into that soul. Jesus says, I then can transform that soul completely into myself. Remember Jesus said, I'm going to make every soul a divine masterpiece. What does that mean? That means that every soul is going to have Jesus reigning in them. It's Jesus who's the most beautiful. It's Jesus that is the, the masterpiece of God. I mean, it, it is God. And he wants to make a uh, masterpiece. It is Jesus in us that is the masterpiece. Not us. We're, we're dust. And he breathed into this dust his image and likeness. And when Adam sinned, he lost that image and likeness of God. And now, Jesus wants to bring about sanctification. The, the era of the, the third era, the third fiat. The sanctification that's going to overflow the earth. We we're just talking earlier this morning. The children have no chance today. And it's every family. They have no chance. What Jesus is going to do is give us the divine will. Why? This is the way to turn back to God. The, the final battle is happening. And you can see it in your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, your parishioners, where most people are walking away from the Catholic faith, walking away from the, 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 the teachings of the church, the dogma and doctrine of our faith. And you can't survive without, without this, uh, um, this image and likeness of God found in the church. We listen to the dogma and doctrine. We listen to God speak to us. We think with the mind of Christ as the church teaches us. The families, the, your families, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your parishioners, everybody has been poisoned, if you want to say. Everybody is sick. And, and I'm, I'm not talking physical. Spiritually, we're, we're, we are, you know, Lent is coming. What are we doing for Lent? Most, most Catholic families do hardly anything at all. You know, the, the early church, um, you fasted from evening until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then you had your first meal. In the, in the early church, they would, eat, they would only eat vegetables, fruits, eggs, you know, dairy products were, they didn't touch them, they didn't touch meat for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus says that, uh, that basically these spirits cannot uh, be driven out unless prayer and fasting occurs. So how are we fasting? A lot of people have said to me, even last night somebody called and said, I'm not doing any fasting, I'm going to do, be doing enough work, I don't need to fast. And it's like, Jesus says these demons cannot be driven out unless there is prayer and fasting. Uh, you know, Paul says we're fighting principalities and powers. So this illumination that's coming is, is to enter into the life of Christ. Christ, as he says very clearly, he says, I go into that soul. I transform that soul completely into myself. I make that soul live of my own divine life. Where we don't become God, but we share in his image and likeness. So this illumination is to be faithful and obedient to Christ in his church. And the wonderful thing, you know, uh, you, you get all these questions. What about this? What about that? When when St. Saint, Saint Bernadette um, found out from Our Lady that she would go to heaven, the priest said to her, well, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. And she says, no, I've got to become perfect. And she's, the, the priest says, well, you're going to heaven. There's nothing to worry about. 
She goes, he goes, what do you have to do? That was the priest's question. What do you have to do? And, and St. Bernadette said, and this is very important for us, you know what we have to do. I don't have to tell you. It's the same thing. We know what we have to do. We, we're, we're, we've learned uh, our faith you know, years ago. We know what the church says. We know what the church teaches. We can't turn away from the church. We can't go away from what the church is teaching. So again, again our God says, you want to be illuminated? He says, uh, be resigned to focus on me. Trust in me only. And only in me. Jesus, I trust you. Scripture says, trust no man. We trust in Jesus, Jesus alone. I believe in you. I hope in you. I have confidence in you. You are my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King. I, I want to be one with you. Volume 1, uh, beloved of my heart, I ardently desire not only to crucify your soul and to communicate the pains of the cross to your body, but also to mark your body with the marks of my wounds. I, Jesus, want to teach you to obtain this grace. And this Jesus is teaching us the prayer that he's asking of us. And what is that? To be crucified, soul and body. That's what the saints say. The bride of Christ must go to Calvary and be crucified. So let's look at your, everybody's suffering here, uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Jesus says, he says, beloved of my heart. He's talking to Louisa, but he's also talking to us. I ardently desire not only to crucify your soul and to communicate my pains of the cross to your body, but also to mark your body with the mark of my wounds. So Louisa received the stigmata, and she said, I don't want anybody to know this. So it was the invisible stigmata, and every now and then, uh, Aunt Rosaria, this is Father Bucci's aunt, would come into the room, and there'd be blood all over the bed, blood all over the floor. There was just blood all over the place. And Aunt Rosaria would run out of the room, grab some towels, run back into the room, and there'd be no blood. See, the Lord allowed at least one person to see what Louisa went through. And that's all documented. Uh, she wanted, she says, Jesus, don't let anybody know what I'm going through. We, on the other hand, love to complain. You know, I got a sliver and it really hurts. It's really a terrible sliver. God, God wants us to, to, as he says, he says, I want to teach you the prayer to obtain this grace. So what we're going to ask for is, is the invisible stigmata. And we don't talk about this to anybody. And this is the prayer. I present myself before the three supreme throne of God. Number one, we present ourselves before the throne, supreme throne of God, bathed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Praying to Jesus. Uh, he, he says, the merit of his most luminous virtues and of his divinity to concede to me the grace to be crucified. That is a good prayer for this Lent. This Lenten season. Every day. Cut this out or copy it. Paste it to your mirror in your bathroom. But pray this prayer. Jesus, I present myself before the supreme throne of God. I want to be bathed in your blood, Lord. I pray to you, Lord. The merit of your most luminous virtues and of your divinity. To concede to me the grace to be crucified. Now the saints say... That the bride of Christ must be crucified. Must go to Golgotha to be crucified. Uh, And and most of us are in terror of any type of pain. We don't want to go through it. Uh, This agony uh, is we, we, we avoid it at all costs. Jesus says, my beloved, I ardently desire not only to crucify your soul, not only to communicate the pains that across your body, but also to mark your body with the mark of my wounds. Do you believe Jesus is saying that to you? <clears throat> if you love the divine will, if you say you want to live, live in the divine will, this is where you have to go. Sooner or later, Jesus says those who voluntarily, voluntarily surrender, he says it's great blessings upon their soul. What we say to Jesus is, Jesus, I trust you. You want this? So be it. 
You want this? I will pray this every day during Lent. You want this? I want this. And, and that's what our lady did. What, what did, what did uh, Simeon say? A sort of sorrow will pierce your heart. You know, he said this to her years, years, and years before uh, Jesus was crucified. Yeah, this was what she wanted. Let it be done to me as you say. Fiat mihi, let it be done to me as you say. So here's a great prayer to begin Lent with. And again, don't panic. Don't panic. You say to Jesus, I'm the beloved of your heart. You desire to not only to crucify my soul, but crucify my body, and to mark my body with the marks of your wounds. I want that. You know, it's, it's, uh, Jesus says to the Lisa, um, you have to be like that little lamb in the hands of the, of the executioner, willing to surrender, licking the hand of the executioner, that little lamb. See, Jesus has got great, great plans. That, that's what Louisa did. That's, that's how Louisa lived. It was complete docility, complete surrender, complete submission. Following Jesus when he said to the Father, not my will, but your will be done. Following um, uh, our blessed mother, fiat be he, let it be done to me as you say. And her fiat was fiat voluntas. So may your kingdom reign in me on earth as the saints possess it in heaven. And, that, and that's what God is waiting for. Uh, this is so wonderful uh, when you see it from, from God's perspective. When you see it from a human perspective, you, you tremble in fear. But when you see it from God's perspective, uh, see, like, for example, when the father sees a soul that loves Jesus Christ, that loves the blessed body, and says, I want to be like you, then the father says, then I want you to go through what my son went through. I want you to go through what my, my daughter went through. And, and that means suffering. And we're all suffering. We're not going to be, we're not going to go through the extreme pain that Jesus went through or Louisa went through or our lady went through. We, we complain when we get a sliver. It's to say to Jesus, let it be done as you say. Whatever you want, I want. I want to become that divine masterpiece. I want to be what you have called me to be. So we have to look at our life and we have to uh, pray this prayer. Uh, again, this would be a great prayer for Lent. It's, a, it's an important prayer. Volume 2, 2, Since the confessor told me to explain to him how I see sometimes the divinity of our Lord, I answered him that it was impossible for me to be able to tell him anything. Now, now Why? Louisa saw from a divine perspective. Louisa saw what was happening in a divine manner. And you don't have human words for that. That's what happens when you read Louisa. Sometimes you go, well, what does she mean by that? As as a little one, she's trying to explain the best she can with human terms, a a divine understanding. And that's what she said to the priest. It's impossible for me to tell you anything. But that night, Jesus appeared to me and almost reproached me. He, he and me because of the, this refusal of mine. Then he made two most luminous rays flash through me. Again, this light, this this love, this life of God uh, was given to Louisa so that the kingdom can be established. And she says, and with the first ray of light, I comprehended in my intellect the faith. Faith is God. And God is faith. When 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 I was uh, in the seminary, I remember some things were going on, and uh, I said to my spiritual director, "How can this happen?" And my fa- my my spiritual father said, "He said uh, uh, they have lost the faith." I said, "How can they lose the faith?" He says, "They have lost the faith." Here is the reason. Okay. Faith is God. God is faith. When you lose the faith, you lose God. And and look at your family. Those that don't want uh, anything of God, it's because they, their faith is gone. And when the faith goes, God goes. Our job is to pray in the divine will so that everyone can begin 
to possess this abundant life. This is what God is waiting for. He's asking us to believe, to trust, to have hope, to have confidence in him. So Jesus shows us, or Louisa says, I tried a few things about faith. I tried to say a few things about faith. Now I will try to say how I see God. And this was the second ray. While I am outside of myself, I find myself at the heights of heaven. And I seem to see God within a light. God himself, Jesus himself, seems to be light. See, this is is what's going to happen. The illumination of conscience is God is going to be there. And God is going to teach us how to think from a divine perspective. We're going to see how we have affected everyone and everything in our life uh, by living in our human misery, our human will. Jesus seems to be light. And within this light, there is divine beauty, divine strength, divine wisdom, divine immensity, divine height, divine depth. Endless and boundless. Even in the air we breathe, God is present. You see why we pray the rounds. God is present. Jesus breathed in my breathing. I want to respond to the Father. Jesus, listen in my listening. I want to hear what you listen to, Jesus, so I can give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Jesus, walk in my walking. See, it's it's to allow Jesus to reign in us when we when we pray the rounds. Even in the air we breathe, God is present, and we breathe God. So each one can make God his own life, as indeed God is. Nothing escapes God. Nothing can escape God. This divine light seems to be all voice, although it does not speak, all operating, though it is always it always rests. It it is present everywhere, though it occupies no space. And while it is present everywhere, it also has its own center. Oh God, how incomprehensible you are. You see why she couldn't she couldn't explain this. She says, how I don't have words to talk about the incomprehensibility of God. You are, I see you, I feel you, you are my life. You restrict yourself within me, but you remain always divinely immense and lose nothing of yourself, yet I feel I am stammering, and it seems I can say nothing. As you enter into this, you you enter into this light. You know, if you've ever listened to... um, um, Near-death experiences, you know, on the internet. If you ever gone to near-death experiences, they always enter into this light. They enter into God, and they begin to participate in God. Jesus wants that now. This light is very, very important. Uh, this illumination is very, very necessary that we begin to live this abundant life. And this is what God is waiting for. He's waiting for us to read, to study, to put this into practice. Why? So that he can manifest himself to us in a, in a more powerful way. Uh, it's, it's not like when we were children. It's not like when we were teenagers. It's not like when we were young adults. It's to begin to live this abundant life. This has never been seen by any human. So when once Adam sinned, it was gone. Jesus, the Son of God, Mary, the Mother of God, come to earth. Why? To give this life back to mankind. And 2,000 years later, we have Louisa, the firstborn, who be- begins to experience this divine life, this divine light, this divine love of God. And now God says, I want others to possess this. He says, all you have to do is learn it. How do you learn it? You read, you study, you put this into practice. Volume 2, 5, 2, 99. Just as in heaven, one is the head and that is God. There are many, and there are many saints of different conditions, orders, and merits. So in the church, in which all of heaven is veiled, one is the head, that is the Pope. And even the triple tiara that covers his head is the sacrosanct trinity veiled. And its members are many that depend upon that depend upon this head, the Pope, that has different dignities, uh, various orders, superiors, and inferior. So here, today is you know the feast of the chair of Peter. This is um, one of the things that we're going to learn 
uh, especially if we see the Holy Community. Uh, when we receive Holy, when, 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 at the consecration, I should say, at the consecration, when the host is held up, or when the chalice is held up, uh, this is where you pray to the Heavenly Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that in the name of Jesus, Mary, and little Louisa, and the Pope to come, the Pope to come will be the first human next to Louisa who will possess this good gift fully. You pray uh, that the, 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 the kingdom be established on earth as it is in heaven, that the world be filled with this uh, second Pentecost. Uh, it'll make the first Pentecost look like a drop in the bucket compared to what's coming. But this is the time to pray that to Jesus, the new Adam, Mary, the new Eve, and Louisa, as Jesus shows Louisa in Vine 26, the third Eve, and then the Pope to come. Because Jesus says to Louisa, I give you this gift so that you give it back to the man. The man basically with the keys, the keys to the kingdom. He will open the door. This is the, this is the job of the Holy Father. He will open the door and there will be one church, one flock, one shepherd. Don't be overwhelmed of what's happening. Pray. With total confidence, total trust, especially at the consecration to the Heavenly Father uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, in the name of Jesus, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa and the Pope to come. God's got great plans. And uh, as we begin to pray this, uh, everything begins to change. The command prayer, uh, again, is so important to learn. Uh, everything's going to change in the world. Everything's going to change in the world. And the only one that's terrified is the evil one because his kingdom is going to come to a complete end, a complete stop. The kingdom is coming. I mean, we have to remember God is in charge. And this people, Tierra, this is what uh, the, the saints said. The papal Tierra will be given back to the Pope. Where's the papal Tierra now? It's in uh, the Basilica in Washington, down down in, in, in the crypt. This, how, how did the saints know that it would be taken away? How did they know it was going to be given back? And what Jesus says to Louisa, the little children of the divine will, their crown in heaven will be a triple crown, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The first one who will possess this will be the, will be the Pope. He'll be recrowned with the papal tiara. I mean, this is just astonishing. Who would have thought, and you know, in, in, in Luisa's time, that this papal tiara would be gone? Nobody. And then Jesus says, every child in the divine will will have a triple crown in heaven. So you can see, we are a part of that new era uh, of, the, of the third Eve, Luisa, and the third Adam, if you want to say, the Pope. It's a new era that's coming. You have to understand this. This is a glorious time to be alive. And, and he says, um, uh, from the greatest to, from the littlest to the greatest, they all serve to embellish my church. And each soul, according to its decree, has the office entrusted to it by the exact fulfillment of the virtues it, it comes to give of itself a splendor so fragrant uh, in my church that the earth and the heaven are perfumed and illuminated. See, this is light. This light is perfumed. And uh, the people are so drawn to this light that by the fragrance, by this fragrance, this perfume of heaven, this odor of sanctity, that it is almost impossible for them not to surrender to the truth. Do you see what God's bringing to your family? Do you see what God's bringing to your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers and your parishioners who are very far from God? There's nothing to worry about. This perfumed, illuminated light is, is going to be, he says, it's going to be impossible for them not to surrender to truth. Jesus is the truth. It'll be impossible for them not to be surrendered to God, not to be surrendered to the Blessed Mother, not to live in the divine will as Jesus and Mary live in, as they, what they gave to Louisa. 
Jesus says to Louisa, you do what I want and I'll do what you want. And that's to begin to live this abundant life. This is, this is what God is looking for. This is what God is asking of us. So I leave it to you then to consider uh, those infected members. That's our family. That's our friends. That's our neighbors. That's our coworkers. That's even our parishioners. Instead of shedding light, they cast darkness. It's God is going to take care of them. How? Through you living in the divine will. You, you, you don't understand. Everything's going to change. Jesus says, I want to transmute the souls who live in the divine will. I want, the, I want the divine will in the midst of creatures, in the midst of your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your parishioners. There's nothing to worry about. The only thing God is asking is that you do what he asks, and that's to read, study, and put this into practice. As you enter into this gift, everything changes. He says, how much torment they have caused my church. But it's all going to be perfected. It's all going to change. Uh, we have to see the negativity has to disappear. Uh, the negativity has to go. Uh, it, it's you, if, it's got to be positive. Jesus, I trust in you. I hope in you. I have confidence. I want this light. I want to. I want to enter into you. I want you to enter into me with this divine light. I want to participate in you, Lord, in in your joys and in your sorrows. I want to be one with you, Christ, crucified, especially during that. Volume 2, 612, 19, 19, excuse me, 1899. Therefore, I continue telling uh, the first gaze, in the first gaze, I pray Jesus to purify me. Okay, now this is, this is going to be important for Lent as well. We pray to Jesus that he purifies us. Of, of thought, word, and deed. He prayed to Jesus that you be purged, purified of all that is opposed to God. And it, so it seemed to me that everything that shadowed my soul was shaken off of it. See, it's when you say this, don't be afraid. See, remember, uh, all of us have to go through the, the, uh, the test of Abraham. And for most of us, the test of Abraham, God will say, do you, do you want to surrender this to me? And when we go, yes, because that's all I wanted to know. That's our test. Sometimes it's so simple. But if we're afraid, oh, I, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not too sure. God goes, fine, I'll come back later. But we could be freed of it if we just say fiat. Mm-hmm. So it says, so it seemed to me that everything that shattered my soul was shaken up. Why? I pray, Jesus, purify me. It's, it's that simple. Don't be afraid. Uh, great martyrdoms are for great saints. Where We are not great saints. So don't worry about it. It's, if, you, if you stub your toe, so be it. I mean, it's fiat. But don't, don't. Don't say, oh, well, I know. I remember we were, we were talking years ago about, about suffering, and this person came up to me and they said, I don't know if I can go through it. I don't know if I can go through it. I don't. I said, you're not a saint. Don't worry about it. It's not going to happen to you. See, saints look for this. Saints desire this. We're not saints. We we run. I got a sliver. We we run in fear. In the second days, I prayed to Jesus to illuminate me. Okay, here's two things that we can begin. Purify me and illuminate me. I, I don't want to stay in this situation anymore. I don't want to stifle the Holy Spirit reigning in me anymore. I pray to Jesus to illuminate me because what good comes to a precious stone from being pure uh, if it is not sparkly so as to capture the gaze of those who look at it? They shall look at it, yes, but with an indifferent eye. Because there's nothing beautiful there. It's just a stone. Much more was I in need of that light that would not only render my soul resplendent, but would make me understand the great action I was about to do. See, we all have a mission. We all have an office. And Jesus is asking us, 
Are you willing to to work? See, where remember when the bishop slapped you across the face at confirmation, uh, you became a soldier for Christ. We are at war. Most of your family, most of your friends, most of your neighbors are wounded. They 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 can't even they can't even stand up to fight. They can't stand up for the truth. They've compromised to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Our job is not to compromise. Our our job is to stand and fight. You have to understand this. Uh, are you are you really a soldier for Christ, or are you a coward? I mean, it's what does it mean to be a soldier for Christ? You believe what Jesus has shown us in His Holy Church. We're faithful and obedient to Christ in His Church. Well, I'm just faithful to Jesus. I don't need the church. Well, you're on your own then. You're not going to make it. See, we we need the church. This is what God said. He set it up this way. We need the Pope. We can't live without the Pope. And so that what we're doing is we're praying for that Pope that is to come. And we pray as Francis. We pray that uh, like St. Paul, you know, there is a, a, a change of heart. You know, it's not to condemn, it's just to say, we we need the Pope who will embrace this great gift of the divine will and give it to the world. We prayed for John Paul II that he would be it. We prayed for Pope Benedict that he would be it. We prayed for Francis that he would be it. But we're praying with confidence because this is what Jesus says it has to happen. Don't worry about what's going on. Your prayer is powerful. Jesus says, Louis says, the more I, I was in need of that light that would not only render my soul resplendent, but would make me understand the great action that I was about to do. Your, the great mission that God has called you to, the great office that God has called you to. Think about it. There's, there's uh, 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 one billion Catholics on earth. There's probably 100,000, 200,000, a couple hundred thousand uh, souls of the divine will, period. Out of, out of all that has happened from Adam till this point, Jesus is saying, I need you to be the yeast so that the world will be set on fire. I need you to be the yeast so that I can give all those that are the, the flower this great gift. The, the divine will in the midst of creatures. Don't worry about them. Pray with total trust and confidence. Since I was not only to be looked at, but identified with my sweet Jesus. And this is the thing about Louisa. Um, This is what God is saying to us. I want you to be identified with me, Jesus. I want, when you're in your family, this is is what it means to the divine will in, in the midst of creatures. When you're in your family, I want them to hear Jesus when you speak. I want them to see Jesus when they look at you. I want them to, um, when you touch them, I want she, I want me, Jesus, to touch them through you. Your family will be healed. There's no question. Jesus is going to be there through you. This is what Louisa is saying. I was not only to be looked at, but identified with my sweet Jesus. Is Jesus in your home? Is Jesus, you know, where is Jesus Christ? See, we have to fight this with this war that we're in. We have to fight uh, this uh, human will that is so alive in us, filled with worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. This is what God is asking. Therefore, it was not enough for me to be purged, but also illuminated. Do you see what's coming? You're going to be purged. But you're going to be illuminated too. And it can be as simple as God saying, good, that's all I wanted to know. Are you willing to let me be in charge of your life? And we go, yes, Lord. He goes, good. It's, he, he is, he never, he never, uh, forces us to surrender. He never does that. So in that gaze, Jesus seemed to penetrate through me just as light of the sun penetrates through crystal. After see, after this scene that Jesus continued to look at me, I said 
to Jesus, most loving Jesus, since you were pleased to purge me first and then to illuminate me, be so kind now as to sanctify me. That's the third step. Purge me, illuminate me, sanctify me. You know, when you receive Holy Communion, this, this is the time to pray the most. This is what Jesus is looking for. This is the, the six steps basically over here. And it's not just, I want to live in your divine will. It's not just that. It's, I, I want to go through these six steps so I can, uh, these five steps so I can get to the sixth step where you will, uh, uh, completely divinize me. This is, this is why you created me. These six steps are so important to pray. Uh, Purge me, illuminate me, sanctify me. More so since having to receive you, Lord God Almighty, you are the holy of holies. It is not right that I be so different from you. See, God is going to bring this to us. This is this has happened. He says, I, I, I don't want you to die and wait for heaven. Because you'll be in purgatory a long, long time. He says, I want you to live and find well now. now. And there is no purgatory. See, to be purged, to be illuminated, and to be sanctified is what God is waiting for. He needs us to cooperate. He needs us to do this. Volume 2, 1899. Many souls were going out of purgatory and like bolts of lightning reached heaven in order to be present at the feast of Mary, our Queen Mama. So here we have uh, many, many souls, as Jesus is showing us, as, as Luis is showing us, like bolts of lightning. Now, one of the, Luis's heart uh, is um, a bolt of lightning comes from heaven through her heart. And her heart, of uh, the spear that pierced Jesus, pierces her heart as well. So from earth to heaven, the spear goes. And from heaven to earth, this lightning bolt goes. If you want to know what Louise's heart looks like, that's her heart. And uh, uh, heaven and earth are, 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 are kissing uh, through Louise's heart. Because it's, it's to bring mankind back to where God wanted mankind in the beginning. So she says, I too pushed through the immense crowd of people, that is the angels, the saints, the souls in purgatory that already occupied that new heaven, which was so immense that the heavens that we see compared to that one seems like a little hole to me. More so since I had the obedience from the confessor to go there. So here, this gives us a glimpse of our prayer life as well. Uh, little by little. Uh, until that great day uh, on earth, little by little, uh, we should present ourselves before the throne of God. And picture it the way you want. It doesn't matter. God will show you what it's going to be like. But present yourself before the throne of God. When you, when you uh, are uh, in prayer, uh, make sure that you, 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 in your mind's eye, you see... Um, this this new heaven, this new earth, this this divine immensity that God wants you to be in. But as I went about looking, I could see nothing but a most luminous sun, and with its rays that penetrated through the whole of me in such a way as to make me become like crystal, so much so that, that my little spots appeared very clearly, as well as the infinite uh, distance that exists between creator and creature. So here again, uh, she, she's talking the, the words of, of heaven, a divine language, with human terms. And you have to understand that this, when you read this, Jesus will show you through what you have, you have studied, basically, the, your, your prayer, your, your desire, your love for God. Uh, he'll show you this as well. And it'll be, and, and then Jesus says, learn from Louisa what I, what I expect from you. To place yourself before, in this divine immensity. Place yourself before the throne of God. In your mind's eye, kneel in front of the Lord and say to him, you know, 
when you're ready to lift the veil, I'm ready to look. Because time has now come to an end. Our lady said it in Revelation 20, 73 years ago to Bruno. Time has now come to an end. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of this era of Lucifer reigning. The new era is going to begin very, very quickly. And you're going to see and hear, as Jesus says to Louisa, unheard of prodigies. Get ready. And, but don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, be in awe of what God is doing. You know, it's just, he's got great, great plans. He's got great, great plans that we're in them. More so since each one of those rays had its imprint, some delineated, delineated from the, the sanctity of God, some from the purity of God, some from the power of God, some from the wisdom of God, and all the other virtues that are and attributes of God. We're going to participate in God. And he says, I want you to begin to learn this now. I want you to begin to live this now. Don't limit God by saying, well, it's not going to happen to me. God says, it can't happen to you. You've already said no to God. You say to God, I can't wait. I don't know how you're going to do this, but I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to enter into this. Then God goes, then prove it to me. Prove it to me. How are you praying? How are you, how close are you getting to me in prayer? What are you doing for Lent? What, what do you want? I got to give you what you want. I've had people say to me, all I want to do is get into the gate of heaven. That's all I want to do. I just want to get in and squeeze in. Scripture says, go for the greatest gifts, the greatest things. That's what scripture says. So the soul in seeing her nothingness, seeing her miseries, Seeing her poverty, that's us. Nothing, misery, and poverty. That's us. Would feel annihilated. Instead of looking, she would fall prostrate, her face to the ground, in front of that eternal son of God, before which no one can stand. God is calling us to be with him. God is calling us to share with him uh, this, this abundant light, this abundant life. Not for us, but for all the world. So we'll end there and come back in about 10 minutes, okay? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.